Hey, Mr. P here. This is the first of several videos that are going to be within the Cellular Biology playlist. Um, this video is really designed to be kind of a, a generic starter video or a generic introductory to cellular biology um, so that we can kind of lay a foundation that we're going to build on through the series of lectures that will come. Um, in this video, we're going to start off our discussion about the cell theory. We're going to go through a few specific examples of how cells have kind of become an exception to that cell theory. Um, we're going to get into a little bit of characteristics of life and what it means to be living and what are the characteristics that are required in order for you to be classified as living. We're going to get into specific unicellular organisms. Okay, um, There are two specific organisms that IB wants you to know about, and so we're going to get into those and how they um, can be used to kind of understand or apply these characteristics of life within a unicellular context. And then we're going to finish the video off with a kind of an in-depth discussion about surface area to volume ratio and the benefits that come with having a high surface area to volume ratio. Ways that cells limit volume while maximizing surface area is really what I want you to get out of this. So those are the objectives. Make sure you, uh, you get out your notes. Make sure you're taking notes. And let's dive in. So in order for us to understand what the cell theory is, we need to kind of identify what the statements within the cell theory are. And the cell theory is a, is a theory that is made up of three statements, the first of which is all living things are composed of cells. That is pretty straightforward, right? All living things, everything that is currently living, that we know about, okay? And again, the cell theory has constantly been evolving over time as our our technology has improved as our uh, understanding of science in general has improved. But uh, within the current definition of living things, and again, we're going to get into what that means, okay, uh, as we talk about the characteristics of life. But if you are considered living based on our known definition, you are composed of cells. Humans are a perfect example of that, right? Humans are composed of cells. Those cells make up tissues, those tissues make up organs, those organs make up organ systems, and eventually organ systems come together um, to compose an organism. Um, second, cells are the basic unit of life. That means that there is nothing at a lower level that is also living. Okay, so as we work through kind of this hierarchy of organization, cells make up that basic unit of life, meaning you cannot go any deeper or any more simple and still be considered alive. Um, cells are those the smallest unit of life. And three, all cells come from pre-existing cells. That means that cells produce other cells. Those three statements constitute or make up the cell theory, and it is vital that you understand these three statements um, as those three statements really lay the foundation for all of biology because everything that is alive, which means everything that is studied under the umbrella of life science, exhibits these three very specific but very simple statements. Everything that is alive is made of cells. Cells at the basic level, as if you divided the organism up into individual living components, the cell would be that base unit, and of all those cells that make up a multicellular organism, all of those cells come from pre-existing cells. Humans, other organisms, perfect example. One sperm cell, one egg cell, which are kind of technically half cells, right? A sperm cell with 23 total chromosomes uh, together with an egg cell that contains its 23 chromosomes um, produce a zygote that is still one cell. It's a diploid cell that has 46. And from that zygote, that single cell, it diversifies through a series of mitotic events, okay, a series of mitosis divisions, um, into the several trillion cells that make you who you are, right? So this one cell produces these two, and then these two would produce two each, and then those four would produce two each, and so you get eight. And so you can see that you eventually um, make up a multicellular organism that is composed of several cells that all originated from one, because all cells come from pre-existing cells. There were and have been several contributors or collaborators to this cell theory, but um, these are the four that I think are really important for us to highlight. Robert Hooke, first to kind of invent the microscope, um, but was the first to observe what he eventually coined the cell. Robert Hooke looked at a sample of cork, which is basically not living cell tissue, 
but is dead kind of remnants of cell walls. It basically is just empty chambers. Um, all that is remaining is the cell wall, and he very quickly, after observing that, noticed that it looked like a bunch of individual jail cells or individual monastery cells that he was currently living in. And so he coined the term cell, but he was the first to kind of look at what would or what we eventually could understood or what we eventually understood as the cell. Antoine von Leeuwenhoek came in after the fact, and he was the first to observe an actual living cell. He looked at pond water. He saw that there were tiny organisms, which he called animicules. Uh, but it turned out that these tiny animicules, or tiny animals that he called, uh, actually were single-celled eukaryotes, um, like protists, that he eventually uh, kind of eventually identified as being cellular. And uh, that really put in motion between these two that uh, cells are the basic unit of life, right? The smallest organism that is alive on the planet is in fact a single-celled organism. Again, you cannot go beyond that level and still be considered alive. Matthias Schleiden was a contributor to the cell theory in that he worked with plant cells. Uh, he not only looked at a variety of plant tissues, but noticed that every single plant that he identified or every single plant tissue that he um, investigated was in fact made of cells. And again, Theodore Schwann was doing the same work, but was doing the work alongside him on animals. And so together, those two kind of constituted this first component, which is all living things are composed of cells. So we have the first two guys which worked towards kind of that second component where cells are the basic unit of life because individual cells make up that base unit. These two kind of worked alongside each other on component one, which is that all living things are composed of cells. It doesn't matter if you're plant or animal, you are all or everything is made of cells. And then you have Louis Pasteur and Rudolf Virchow, which both kind of worked on this idea number three, which is that all cells come from pre-existing cells. You probably know, and it's going to be discussed later on in the IB syllabus, that Louis Pasteur was actually uh, really influential in disproving spontaneous generation. Spontaneous generation is that idea of uh, cells and other organic matter just spontaneously appearing out of nowhere, kind of like magic, right? But it is not, in fact, real. It's not true. Um, he disproved that spontaneous generation with the use of that swanic flask. Again, there's going to be a different video on that. We're not going to get into too much detail. But he disproved spontaneous generation. By disproving spontaneous generation, it helps to prove this third component in that all cells have to come from pre-existing cells. They cannot just spontaneously appear. He disproved that. Uh, Rudolf Virchow actually looked at mitosis, and more specifically, he looked at cell division. And because he was actually able to witness cells divide, it only validated or only proved this third component to be accurate or true. Um, he saw with his eyes, through the use of a microscope, cells divide, um, which is really, really important when you, when you kind of round out this cell theory with this third component. Right? Again, cell theory. All living things are composed of cells. Cells are the basic unit of life. All cells come from pre-existing cells. Together, all three statements make up the cell theory. So... What does it mean? All living things are made, made of cells. That was component number one. When you look at tissues, and again, it doesn't matter if you're a plant tissue, this is a plant tissue, or an animal tissue, you can very readily or very easily observe the fact that when you uh, blow up or uh, magnify a sample, you see all these individual kind of building blocks, so to speak. These tissues are, are made up of kind of this unicellular structure um, when put together in rows and within other cells of the same type, produces tissues. And again, those cells make tissues, tissues make organs, organs make organ systems, organ systems make organisms. But it doesn't matter if you're plant or animal, you are composed of cells. That is component number one. Component number two, cells are the basic unit of life. It doesn't matter if you're multicellular or unicellular, you are composed of at least one cell. Again, this is paramecium. This is a particular bacterium, right? It doesn't matter if you're prokaryotic, doesn't matter if you're eukaryotic, doesn't matter if you're plant, doesn't matter if you're animal, doesn't matter if you're a fungus, doesn't matter if you're a, uh, an insect. All living things are made of cells, and cells are the basic unit of life. 
And all cells come from pre-existing cells. The third component of the cell theory, you can see that um, there is an animal cell undergoing mitosis. The nucleus was divided first, and the cytoplasm cell membrane is pinching in right here until eventually it splits into two cells. That is cell division. This cell was produced from this cell. Um, here you can see binary fission. This is the prokaryotic asexual reproduction, or form of asexual reproduction. Uh, but again, one cell duplicates its DNA. Um, it, it moves the DNA into opposite sides, and then it kind of cleaves itself uh, to form two cells from one. That is the cell theory. Really, really important, and is um, extremely fundamental to the idea of cellular biology.